All right, good afternoon. Uh, as soon as uh, you and I are done, uh, we will be joined by Ryan Paulson, the FAO's Director of Emergencies and Resilience, to brief you uh, on the FAO's Horn of Africa drought response. Um, just want to let you know that the Secretary General held a virtual meeting earlier today with Sergei Lavrov, the Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Russian Federation. He also spoke uh, a very short while ago with the Foreign Minister of Ukraine, Dmitry Kuleba. Uh, the Secretary General is expected to be at the stakeout at about 3.15 this afternoon uh, to read out a statement uh, on Ukraine. This will take place after his uh, monthly uh, luncheon with the Security Council presidency, which this month is being hosted uh, by the Russian Federation. Uh, it will not be before 3.15, uh, at least it should not be, but just uh, we'll give you a few minutes uh, warning. Uh, Stephanie Williams, the special advisor for Libya, was received today in Tripoli by the president of the Presidency Council, Mohamed al Memphi, and the Presidency Council member, Abdullah al Lafi, to review the latest developments in Libya. <clears throat> they took note of the spirit of consensus exhibited by the House of Representatives and the High Council of State and emphasized the importance of maintaining calm. Yesterday, Ms. Williams met with Prime Minister Abdul Mahid uh, Debeba to discuss recent developments and the votes taken by the House of Representatives to adopt a constitutional amendment and designate a new, a new prime minister. Ms. Williams reiterated the importance of all actors and institutions to work within the political framework and, above all, to preserve calm on the ground in the interest of Libya's unity and stability. She also met on Sunday with the Prime Minister-designate uh, Fatih Bashkaga. Uh, the special advisor uh, highlighted the need to go forward in an inclusive, transparent, and consensual manner and to maintain stability in Tripoli and throughout the country. And today, the UN mission in Libya also strongly condemned the attack on uh, journalist Mabruka al-Mismari that took place on February 12th in Benghazi while she was uh, working. She was reportedly physically and verbally assaulted by a group of people, and her camera was broken during the incident. Turning to Sudan, the first stage of the UN's facilitated consultations for political process on the way forward has concluded. The first stage began on January 8th and brought together a range of groups, including civil society, women's rights groups, political parties, academics, journalists, and others. The Secretary General Special Representatives in Sudan, Volker Pertz, said he heard a range of perspectives and proposals from the Sudanese people to overcome the current political crisis. He expressed his gratitude for the commitment and enthusiasm of representatives of groups from across Sudan who came to meet with the UN engage, and engage constructively and share their concrete ideas. Today in Bamako in Mali, the UN, um, we along with our humanitarian partners, launched the country's 2022 humanitarian response plan. The plan seeks $686 million to help 5.3 million of the most vulnerable people out of the 7.5 million people are, who do need humanitarian help. Our humanitarian colleagues are telling us that the level of needs is higher than at any point since 2012. The past year was characterized by the deterioration in the humanitarian situation due to growing insecurity in the central region of the country. The security crisis is now expanding to the southern region. Violence and climate shocks have increased the number of people facing severe food insecurity. Some 1.8 million people will need food assistance this year, 51% more than in 2021. Civilian casualties also sharply increased in the northern and central Mali last year, with civilians increasingly the target of violent attacks by armed groups, increased intercommunal violence, and the risks posed by improvised explosive devices. Mali was one of the 10 least funded humanitarian response plans in 2021. Despite mounting challenges, aid workers and organizations have stayed and delivered. Humanitarian organization reached more than two and a half million people in need of humanitarian assistance last year. Moving to Madagascar, the death uh, toll continues to rise a week after tropical cyclone Batisarai hit uh, the country's southeastern coast. At least 121 people have died, according to the government. 
More than 29,000 men, women, and children have been displaced across 79 different sites, and nearly 19,000 homes have been destroyed, flooded, or damaged. Humanitarian teams uh, from the UN and others have been deployed to affected areas where they are working in collaboration with the government to scale up the response. <clears throat> food partners are providing both cash assistance and in-kind food assistance. The World Food Program is distributing unconditional cash transfers via mobile money to help impacted families for the next uh, three months. Health partners are also supporting the resumption of health services and the rehabilitating medical facilities damaged by the cyclone. And our friends at UNICEF have provided medicines for the treatment of nearly 50,000 cases of malaria and is also supporting the repair of cold chains for vaccines and essential medicines. Meanwhile, local communities are authorized and author, excuse me, and authorities are on alert for another tropical weather system, Tropical Storm Dumaco, which is expected to make landfall in the northeast of Madagascar tomorrow. Quick update from Peru, where um, our UN technical mission that is supporting the government's response to the country's largest oil spill in recent times. According to our resident coordinator, Igor Garafulich, the mission is finalizing its report. The UN team met with Peruvian authorities on Friday to convey recommendations on managing the environmental, social, and humanitarian impacts of the oil spill. The team also shared recommendations to strengthen nationwide disaster preparation in response to mechanism. The UN and Peru will continue to support Peru's response in the following months, including through assessing the social impact of the oil spill. And uh, tomorrow, we will be joined by Bruno Le Marquis, the UN's resident coordinator in Haiti. He will join us virtually to discuss the International Donor Conference for Haiti, which takes place this Wednesday, February 16th. Um, and we wanna, want to say a big thank you to our friends in Slovenia for their contribution to the regular budget and paying their dues in full, bringing us up to 55, or 55, as we would say. Yes, Edie. Uh, thank you, Steph. A couple of follow-ups on the Secretary General's phone call with uh, Foreign Minister Lavrov. Um, what was the Secretary General's message, um, his aim in wanting to call him? How long did the call last, and uh, did he come away with... Uh, any feeling that uh, conflict can be averted? Um, the call lasted, uh, I think, a bit more, uh, I'll have to check, I think a bit more over, uh, over 20, uh, 20 minutes. Just to note that in addition to Ukraine, they also discussed uh, they also discussed um, other issues such as Libya and Syria and the ongoing visa uh, issue regarding uh, the host country and the Russian uh, Federation. I think the, what the Secretary General expressed uh, to both uh, foreign ministers was his serious concern over the high tensions uh, around Ukraine. He welcomed the ongoing diplomatic discussions to defuse those tensions and underline yet again the fact that there is no um, there is no alternative to diplomacy. But I think the Secretary General may have a bit more for you uh, this afternoon. And um, a follow up on Stephanie Williams. Mm -hmm. um, also, so we know that she spoke to the mm -hmm. current Prime Minister, the Prime Minister designate. Did she? come away with any feeling that uh, the current prime minister will accept uh, a new prime minister? Uh, I think these were important discussions for Stephanie Williams to have, to meet with both, uh, with both men. I think it is important for Libyan leaders to speak for themselves in that regard. Mr. Bayes and then Philippe. Before my, before my question, um, Still, I, I know you're after this as well, but we're still requesting to speak yeah, to Stephanie yeah, Williams yeah, yeah. As, a, as a matter of yeah. you know, as soon as possible. Um, quickly on the um, two foreign ministers, uh, you said about 20 minutes with Lavrov. Was it about the same with Foreign Minister uh, Kaleba? I'll check, but I'll... Uh, I'll, I'll okay, and, and just to be time. clear, it was the SG who initiated these calls. He, he decided to call Foreign Minister Lavrov rather than the other way around. 
uh, the call with Foreign Minister Lavrov, I think, had been scheduled for some time, and then he called uh, afterwards, he called the Foreign Minister of Ukraine. And just to finish on that, the Secretary General some time ago said in this room that he didn't believe there would be a war. Is he now, after the calls and after the diplomacy and everything we've seen, that was about three and a half weeks ago, does he still believe there will not I, I be a that, conflict? That opinion, as far as I know, has not changed. One other issue, then, if I can, on a, on a different subject, Sudan. There's been another arrest of a prominent opposition figure, Mohammed al fahi who was a member of the Sovereign Council. He was one of the people mm -hmm. who was trying to get into the details of Bashir's finances and his political web. Um, what's the UN's reaction to his arrest? We, we continue to be concerned about uh, these uh, arbitrary arrests uh, that we've witnessed uh, recently, uh, whether it's journalists, civil society uh, leaders. Philippe. Thank you, Stéphane. Uh, question on the lunch. Uh, the lunch is organized by Secretary General, and usually, if I'm not wrong, the Secretary General chooses the subject. Is the subject today is Ukraine only? No, the and also on the sorry. lunch, is it virtual? Is it uh, here? Is it no, I think they will eat real food. Uh. <laughs> It is not a metaverse lunch. No. Can we have uh, a I, menu? I uh, the, um, the lunch, uh, I mean, as it's been, I think, more, more recently, is organized by the presidency. Uh, so I think my understanding is that they're having lunch at the permanent mission of Russia uh, oh. as, the, as the president. Mm -hmm. And I have no doubt other issues uh, will but, be discussed. But, but it, is hosted by, it is hosted by, by the, the president, by okay. the president's But the Council. subject, usually, I think it's a... I, there's a dis I mean, there's an agreement on the subjects that will be discussed, and I assume other uh, issues that are on the Security Council agenda will also be discussed. And it would be with the Ambassador Nebenzia, because he was... I, I, he, um, he I, I think last week. That's a, it's a good question. I think maybe ask uh, Theodore, uh, or we can find out after the lunch. Thank you. Madame, and then... Yeah, I, I was just curious what the Secretary General bases his belief on that uh, Russia will not invade... Ukraine further. It's from his own, uh, from his own analysis and his own hopes. Uh, on, a, on a separate question, can we get uh, some insights into how this new uh, flow of assets from uh, the U.S. Federal Reserve Bank in New York to Afghanistan, how that will uh, impact the U.N.'s operations there, where that money will go through the U.N.? Thanks. Uh, Yes, I will try to get you more details on that. Yes, sir. Actually, my question is also on that uh, Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. um, because last Friday, uh, you said it, it's an encouraging step mm -hmm. to defrost those money. But, uh, you know, President Biden signed the uh, executive order to divide the f seven, seven billion found between 9-11 um, victim as well as Afghanistan humanitarian. Uh, aid. And now it seems many people, they beg a differ about that. For example, uh, last, uh, I believe last Sunday, uh, this Sunday, uh, a former president of Afghanistan, Karzai, said that it's uh, withholding money or seizing money from the people of Afghanistan in their name is unjust and unfair and an atrocity against Afghan people. Uh, What's your response to his comment? And and do you think do you think it, uh, the United States should return all seven billion? Look, I think we have been in discussion with a number of countries about unfreezing uh, the assets uh, as a way to help uh, the liquidity uh, in the economy in um, in Afghanistan, as to help the Afghan uh, people. Um, Afghans have a have a right to express themselves and express their, and it is in a sense their 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 their, their duty to, to, to do so. Um, we we said you know from the, what we'd seen in the reports yes we welcome this as kind of a step in the right uh, in the right direction. We're just trying to do whatever we can in our discussions with various interlocutors to help the Afghan people. That is our only goal. Okay, uh, I'll come back to you. Mr. Barada and then Abdel Hamid, and then Pam. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, Steph. Uh, just a clarification. I, I have a question whether the 
Secretary General has spoken with any uh, other officials from other countries like the U.S. Uh, 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 Secretary of State uh, because uh, I know it's uh, the crisis is, be is between Russia and Ukraine on the ground, but it is wider than that and whether he would intend to talk to other leaders uh, around the world. And I have a question on Libya as well. There have been various contacts at various levels, uh, people in the Secretariat uh, and a number of other parties uh, involved in the, the issues around Ukraine. Uh, your question on Libya. Uh, on, on Libya, so is it, have you decided at the UN uh, with who you're going to deal as a uh, recognized government or you're letting this for um, uh, Stephanie Williams to uh, sort out the uh, the situation how what's your evaluation of this uh, political I, I had um, it is first of all for the Libyan leaders to sort out uh, their situation to 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 paraphrase you uh, but I, I think I had a pretty extensive uh, back and forth on, on Friday to explain that, uh, in our view, there is a prime minister, which the, the, um, uh, the special advisor met with, and there's also a prime minister designate. Uh, and that remains that was a situation on Friday. That remains a situation uh, today. Abdel Hamid, and then Pam. Thank you, Stefan. I have a similar question to my friend Ali, uh, on, on last Friday you spoke about that you, the recognized government in Libya of Abdel Hamid al-Beba, and your statement was headlines all over the Arab world. But then the statement from the secretary came, I think, on Saturday, retreating that, I mean, rescinding what you have said. Does that mean that the UN has changed its position from Friday to Saturday, that from recognizing <laughs> The not, government of the Hamid back to not, a neutral position? Not at all. I mean, unless I'm mistaken, we did not have a statement on f Saturday. There was an SG statement early Friday uh, about the, the process. And I think, I, I hope I was as clear as, as possible uh, after quite a lot of uh, words being exchanged uh, between all of you and, and, and myself. And again, I, I think I was pretty clear. There is a process where there is currently a prime minister, and then there's a prime minister designate who was given a few weeks uh, to nominate a, a government. And that continues to be the situation today. Um, I'm still confused. Which, uh, well, I, I didn't finish. Please. Okay, no, please, yeah. I, I have another question. Please, please don't uh, rely on I me to, uh, to, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> My question, Israel, this morning assassinated another young Palestinian, 17-year-old Mohammed Abu Salah Niyajini, uh, and three others were wounded, two of them critically, and yet we didn't uh, hear anything from the UN. Don't you see that Israel is launching a genocidal war against the Palestinians? Uh, I would just say that uh, we're very much aware of what's happened in uh, Sheikh Jarrah and, 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 the re and other places in the occupied uh, West Bank and East uh, Jerusalem. Our colleague, Mr. Venisla, and his team are following the situation uh, very closely uh, and imploring for calm uh, from all sides. Okay, uh, Pam? Uh, can you give us an update on UN staff in Ukraine? And will the UN brief at the Security Council meeting on Minsk that Russia has called for Thursday? Thank you. I don't have an update for you on uh, who, if, if the council has asked for a secretary, if the presidency has asked for a secretary briefer and who that, if they have, who that person will be, but I will let you uh, know. We have, um, we currently have about 1,600 or so uh, staff in, um, 
in Ukraine. Uh, and as of now, as I'd mentioned, we have no, uh, there are no plans for evacuation or relocation of UN, uh, of UN staff. And as a quick follow-up to James and Tulsi's question, the, when the SG said he doesn't think there would be an invasion and he hopes he's wrong, he's right, can you say if all of the events and the military buildup has influenced his view of it? Or you said it hasn't changed. It has. It, does... It does Go ahead. The, the situation obviously has informed his view, and he's not. Uh, I mean, he he's not living in a in a bubble. He's had discussions uh, with various people, and I don't believe his uh, his opinion has changed in in any way. Um, just on the on the number on the number of staff, just to be exact, as of today, uh, one thousand six hundred sixty one. Uh, UN staff. That's one thousand four hundred forty one nationals and 220 internationals, and I hope that all adds up to 1,661. Okay. Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, we'll go to Michelle uh, and Stefano. Chief Steph, um, again, just to follow up on these phone calls this morning, um, what was the... Secretary General's assessment of the response he received from Foreign Minister Lavrov to his concerns. Uh, I'm not going to get into those uh, into those details at this point. Um, and is this uh, is this the beginning of a possible greater role for the UN and try to mediate these? I, I, you know, I, I think, as the Secretary General said, his good officers are always uh, available. I think it is his uh, his duty and responsibility as Secretary General to uh, be in touch with many of the parties uh, involved in this uh, current situation. Uh, Stefano. Yes, about um, two questions, one about Ukraine and one about Libya. About the... Uh, Ukraine. What does the Secretary General think about the, the issue that Russia has with Ukraine, the possibility that Ukraine becomes part of NATO in the future, and the request that instead there is this, you know, the NATO uh, give to the Russian the assurance that Ukraine will never uh, belong to that, or, uh, to that uh, alliance. So does he have an opinion on that? Should the NATO accept his request or not? I, I, and then, uh, and, and then about well, okay. Go okay, ahead. I mean, on, on this, this is not for the Secretary General of the UN to to decide. What he feels is that there are there are issues regarding European uh, security. Uh, there are differences of opinions, and those need to be resolved through dialogue and through diplomacy. Your second question, sir. Um, I understand that he's not he's not going to decide. I mean, it's not him to decide, but he should have an opinion on that, I think, you know? I think he has an opinion, must have an opinion. But on the on the um, uh, follow on the Libya, when you answer the, the question of uh, my colleague uh, Ali, uh, there was, all of a the sudden, there was uh, interference. I couldn't understand anything. So if you can just uh, briefly uh, respond it and, uh, I mean, say it again, and then uh, I... Just this question. I understand what is, uh, you know, the problem with the two prime ministers that you say, well, there is a process before. But if for some reason the, the, the prime minister now that he's in Tripoli is ousted by force, instead to wait the process of two weeks, whatever it takes, he's ousted by force. What will be uh, uh, the secretary general uh, uh, reaction to that? Look, what, what I said to Ali, uh, and I repeated what I'd said on Friday, that there is currently a situation where there's a prime minister and a prime minister designate. Ms. Williams is engaged with both, and that is, there was a situation on Friday that continues to be the situation, um, that continues the situation uh, today. I'm not going to speculate about uh, scenarios that you uh, you elaborate, but what is clear 
uh, from our side is that there should not be any violence. There should not be any force, and that the Libyan leaders need to put first and foremost the interests of the Libyan people themselves, of the 2.8 million who uh, who registered uh, who registered to uh, to vote, and their need to go forward in an inclusive, transparent, consensual, and peaceful manner to maintain st stability in Tripoli and beyond. Mr. Bayes. Two further questions on Afghanistan, if I can. Mm -hmm. um, you have not condemned or criticized in any way the fact that the Biden administration is diverting some of these assets that legally are the assets of the Afghan people to 9-11 victims, who I'm sure are very worthy, but why should Afghanistan pay? Um, if you're not objecting, then explain to me, morally and legally, why is this justified to divert this money when the 9-11 attacks were um, carried out by uh, uh, Al-Qaeda, Osama bin Laden, who is a Saudi, who was invited into Afghanistan by the Taliban, who then as now were not democratically elected. The Afghan people had no control on them being there. Um, and hijacks that were carried out by 19 hijackers, 15 of, 15 of them from Saudi Arabia, none of them from Afghanistan. How can this be right? We are, we'd seen the reports, we're in touch with our US, uh, US colleagues. Our efforts have been, in all our discussions with uh, US and others, is to get as much money, Afghan money, as possible back to the Afghan economy and to the Afghan people. But does the UN think it's wrong that some of the money that belongs to the Afghan people legally, without <laughs> doubt, is being diverted to another cause, however worthy. I'm going to leave it at that. OK. Another question, then, on Afghanistan. Um, can, you ask, can I ask what you know about what UNHCR is doing, what IOM is doing? There are 12,000 Afghan refugees in Abu Dhabi. Mm -hmm. They are not going anywhere. They are, most of them, trying to get to the US. They're left in limbo. They say they're not allowed to leave their camps. They say, although they very much welcomed the fact that they were given refuge originally by the UAE, they now feel like prisoners. What is the UN doing about those people? I, I, it's a very good question. I saw the reports, uh, and I will check with our colleagues at the UNHCR and IOM to see what they're doing on the ground.